Hello, everyone, and welcome to Teddy Floppy Year Mountain Adventure. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, he's playing a goofy little kid's game that's totally irrelevant to the channel for an April Fool's gag. And that's sort of what I'm doing? But look, there is actually relevant precedence for this, at least to me. See, I have a little bit of an unfinished business with this game. Way back in, like, 2015, which apparently is when it came out, I was just kind of browsing through Steam, looking at sales, as I do, and I came across this game. And saw that dead-eyed stare from Teddy Floppy Ear himself, who hasn't even shown up on the main menu. So I started reading the reviews, and all of them were mostly positive, and they said, well, they were things like, Great game for your kid. Get this for your kid. My kid loved this. And they were all, like, so weirdly, like, uniform and unspecific and unsincere. And that sort of set off alarm bells for me. Like, that creeped me out a little bit. Like, I almost thought that they were, like, troll reviews or something, and that this was going to turn out to have some kind of, like, dark secret, like, gore or violence or stuff like that. And so I bought it. I put it into my library, and I just never touched it for all this time. Now, over time, I realized that it is an established franchise. Apparently, a lot of people play it, and the reviews were just a little weirdly written. There's probably nothing actually wrong with it. But it's a couple days until April Fool's. It falls on a Saturday, so this won't interrupt the regular upload schedule. And I thought it might be kind of fun to finally come back here, see what it's actually like, but take it, like, from the perspective of a detective in an interrogation room who's just determined to peer beneath the facade and see the evil within. Uh, well, let's have a look around the menu first. This innocuous, actually quite nice looking thing. It had the default Unity uh, launcher, so I was able to actually run this in 4K, which is nice. Uh, the Four Parents opens up a dead link to a site. Okay. Now, as of a couple months ago, this series is actually not available on Steam anymore. Uh, which, you know what that means, makes it lost media. That's the angle we're going at here. Always run on off and a locked option to skip dialogue. Okay, what are we going to be running from? And why does it want us to hear that dialogue so badly? Uh, perhaps it'll be reciting incantations to brainwash the youth? Also, I love how it has a narrator to read the buttons out when you click them, which makes sense because the target audience maybe can't read yet, but why does it only say it when you click on something? Is it to convey that your choices have consequences, and sometimes you just have to pull the trigger and see where it takes you? Play. Create a new profile. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll make a name when we click on one of these. This is quite cluttered. New Let's choose the heart. A heart will protect us. Uh. I'm going on a trip to the mountains. A new adventure awaits. There's someone waiting for me. On the platform. Oh, I can already see the station. We're nearly there. Okay, couple of things to unpack, because this is already creepier than I expected. First of all, Look at him. I mean, he's less detailed and therefore not quite as bad as the art on the Steam page. But look at those dead black button eyes. Eyes black as pitch like a doll's eyes. And that nose is identical. For all we know, this thing has three eyes. And it's just using our perception of what a face is to lull us into a false sense of security. Also, I don't see anyone waiting on this platform. In fact, this platform seems like it's been abandoned for years. Yeah, everybody clap. I said it. I said it, and now I get a dollar from YouTube. Also, that voice, like, the way it just, like, scratches out of its throat, almost like this thing is pained by having to speak. Like it's only newly gained sentience and the ability to do so. 
uh, the assertion that someone is waiting for me ahead, uh, it all reeks of dream logic, but let's move forward and see what else it has in store. Seems like it's like a classic style adventure game. Now indicate the magpie. The magpie. Teddy floppy ear will talk to her. That's who you saw on the platform? I'll be honest, looking at this place, I can't even believe the trains run out here, but I guess you talk to the woodland critters as well? You are definitely not mentally well. Hello, Teddy. Hello. I found a button. Do you want it? Oh, yes. This arrow means moving to another scene. Okay. Can we explore around beyond this at all? Oh, this is actually kind of cool because mechanically this is not super unlike the adventure games that I used to play as a kid. But it's kind of got like a weird hybrid art style going on where the characters are 3D, but the environment is all 2D. Can we go inside the platform at all? Maybe urbex this thing? Huh, I have no idea if this is actually commonplace or if this is just kind of the way these games are now. Or if these games are even still popular or if this isn't kind of an anachronism. Bravo. Now you know how to play. Let's begin. Maybe we'll see what we're running from. Oh. Okay, we're starting to peel back the layers of Teddy Floppy Ear's ruptured psyche now. Was that whole thing arriving at the abandoned station just like a dream sequence? Will this magpie really talk? Who are you looking for, Teddy? Oh, here is my uncle. That's your uncle? Your uncle's a dog? Or is it that guy, which I can't even tell what that is yet? A pig with a beard, perhaps? Hello, Uncle Henry. Hello, Teddy. I'm glad you came. But, but, oh, lavender landschaft. I need a few more tubes of paint for the plein air. Teddy, why don't you walk home alone? It's a small town. 12 Large Street. I'm going to the shop, just around the corner. Can you find your way home? Sure I can. 12 Lodge Street. Okay. Yeah, why does everybody in this game... I mean, that sounds like it may even be the same voice actor. But everybody in this game so far just sounds like they're choking out their lines. Almost... Almost as if the voice actors are recording this under threat or torture. Also, I can hear a very audible mic hiss whenever somebody's talking, like they haven't processed the audio at all. The train leaves in 20 minutes. You just came up with that on the spot. God, you are weird looking when you face forward. But look, look at that face on Teddy himself. Mouth hanging agape like he has no idea what to do with himself. I guess we're left to fend for ourselves on these streets. Well, I guess we don't have to worry too much about navigation since they just put pictures of where we're going on all the signage. How do you like the mountains, Daddy? I only just got here, Mom. A dead-eyed porcelain sheep, mouth doesn't move when it speaks. Asking me how I like the mountains, perhaps trying to goad me into going up there alone? Into the mouth of some beast that she acts as an informant for? Uh, we have a choice here, a fork in the road. Here it is. If you had to go to the paint shop, how did you get here before me? I have to say, though, like, aside from the horrifying-looking characters, the music in these environments are actually quite pretty. And look at the way the shading kind of goes over all this. It seems like maybe there might be some kind of active Unity lighting going on. 
like actual 3D space lighting that interacts with the 2D. I do wonder if we were to shift the focus, what this would all actually look like. A hundred brown hedgehogs. The key which was hanging on the peg is gone. And what did it open? The basement. There's a camera for you there. Will I be taking photos? Yes. Make sure you take it with you to the mountains today. I have a special task for you. I need to go now to prepare an artistic plein air for us. Oh, wow. And, and what is that? <laughs> a plein air is a place where artists go to paint. Like an atelier, but in the open air. But where will this plein air be? Take the tourist route towards the forest. The way is marked with white and green signs. You'll go past a smallish rock with symbols carved on it, and there's a meadow behind it. I'll be waiting for you there. Remember about the camera. Something about Uncle doesn't seem right. I'll start with finding the lost key. First of all, his voice doesn't sync up with his mouth movements, and occasionally his arms just reset themselves. But why does everyone in this village want me to go up to the mountains? This guy refuses to help me with anything, insists on me descending into the dark basement by myself to pick up a camera which he insists I'll need. No, no. Well, let's go upstairs and look for it, I suppose. Oh, out in the nest of some local birds. Maybe I can ask the magpie to go retrieve it for me? Can I interact with any objects in the environment? Uh, only sort of. Yeah, it doesn't seem like... No. What do you mean, no? It, it doesn't seem like there's actually all that much interaction. If you'll think back to, like, the Living Books games of old, you could click on and actually have, like, a pretty involved animation or song with, like, just about anything in the environment. No. Okay, so the key is out there. And it doesn't look like these windows open. I'll have to find some way of getting out there. Maybe using the rope hanging from the ceiling? Oh, watch me get bested by the puzzles in a children's game. Uh, let's go outside and see if we can't get an angle on that. Yeah, there it is. We'll have to enter the backyard. And potentially walk off into the forest. Everybody in this town is just trying to get me to enter some dangerous space alone. Almost sort of reminds me of the Mr. Widemouth creepypasta. No. Hello, little bee. Treading on the flowers in the garden. We can share our honey with him as long as he doesn't tread on the garden. Help us. If I meet this bear, I'll talk to him. Little bee, whose is the nest here on the tree? A magpie lives in it. A magpie? Where have I seen? Okay, so I guess I was right. I need to go back, talk to the magpie to help retrieve the key, and apparently go confront a bear that keeps wandering into town? Well, I suppose it is my kind, but my name is Teddy. Which begs the question, everyone else is a real animal, with the exception of this weird static porcelain sheep. So am I supposed to be a stuffed animal, or am I a real bear? Well, let's go ask the magpie to help retrieve the key. Magpie, have you found a key lately? Ah, oh, yes, a shiny one. I found it here. It was lying on the ground. Uh, I thought it was nobody's. All right, magpie, cough it up. Teddy Floppy here. Here is the key. Thank you. I mean, you're very conspicuously not actually standing on this. Thank you. 
And now we can see what's in that basement. Now we should be able to use this item on here. Oh, look. There's even like little bugs crawling on the cobwebs in the foreground. All right, let's get down there. Imagine if it did the Resident Evil opening animation. Huh. Oh, there's a camera on the table. Is that a pile of coal? Oh, and look at all these strange jarred oddities he keeps down here. I mean, those look like pickles, but the rest. Well, let's take this camera. A camera! I love taking photos. Uh, but before we go up into the mountains, let's see about this bear. Gotta confront something scary in this part. That basement, like. Why does he keep it locked? You are... I am definitely supposed to be a stuffed animal. Uh, let's slowly approach. This thing could maul the stuffing out of me. Ah, oh, I'm like a sentient doll brought to life by some kind of magic. Hello, bear. What? Where? No. Uh, a little bear. Ah. Uh. I have an idea. Why don't I bring a container for honey from home? Okay, so I guess that's how we resolve this dispute. I am not used to things being this simply completed, and it's like throwing me off. Uh, also, oh wow, we can actually bring up a map of the entire place. Okay, we are here, and I guess the forest is just the next stop on the way up there. But in any case, this music is way too loud. Can't hear the dialogue over it, so let's put that down and the other up. And get back to what we were doing. I have brokered a peace treaty between the bees and the bears. Should you accept this treaty, our communities can continue trade in peace. There's gotta be a jar or something here. That looks about right. Up. You can keep bits and bobs in it. Or honey. I'll go and say sorry to the bees. And I'm going to see my uncle. That sounded very threatening. I've just noticed as we loaded in that that squirrel is huge and skitters away as we approach. And only comes out when we're farther away. The way that thing moves is actually kind of terrifying. We're being stalked through no. these woods. <laughs> and I love how uh, Teddy's just like, nope, not going over there, not investigating. Look, the way it's like out of focus in the background. I think we keep moving, but we're going to be pursued by this thing for a while. Perhaps the chosen form of a skinwalker? Yeah, look. Tribal markings. This is clearly the territory of some kind of cryptid. These are the symbols Uncle was talking about. I wonder what they mean. Hello? It's not letting me... It's not letting me interact with this side. The thing is coming up like there's something here, but it won't let me mess with it. Is it cut content, or perhaps just the ghosts that inhabit this game not allowing me to interact with the true knowledge contained within? Ah, uh, here you are. Yeah, thanks for the help, Uncle. Oh, and look at the papers there. Wow, it's so beautiful here. The mountains look beautiful at whatever time of the year. Look, now we are surrounded by luscious green. In autumn, the leaves are golden and red down there. While in winter, ah! everything is covered by a white and blue cover of snow. I look at it carefully and then try to capture it in my paintings. Why did you capture your voice entirely in my right ear? 
So let's see if you have an artist's soul in you. You were speaking directly into that one ear, almost as if you were standing over my shoulder in reality as I sit in this darkened room. Uh, almost as if that line was like the one true thing you intended for me to take away from this. And you want to see if I have an artist's soul? Perhaps because you want it for yourself? Okay, I guess we're doing a mini game. Help Teddy Floppy here and find five differences between the photographs. Indicate them on the photo on the right. Okay, uh, bird facing the opposite direction. Facial expression on the sheet. This isn't here. Only two differences more. Okay, um, you're in a different position. Only one difference more. Uh, but that last one is a little bit elusive. Well, this one's actually craning its head up. That's what I call being observant. My audience would disagree. Okay, but maybe I should have thrown that on purpose. If he thinks he got whatever he wanted to see in me, I think I'm going to be the one sitting atop the ritualistic sacrifice altar on top of that mountain. Your book of secrets. What counts in art is the feel for shape and color. And now, let's color the crocus purple. Okay, so did you really not have the ability to find somebody like this, or did you specifically want the soul of your nephew? Have a look at the little cow. How is it moving? Find and indicate in the picture a cat. Okay, those eyes are exceptionally creepy, but also I was not prepared for it to blink at me. Wow, that owl is pissed off. That's it. Everything can be drawn on the basis of simple shapes. Cool. How come only the cow was animated, though? Uncle, how come only the cow was animated? So it's not like just like a stylistic choice. That was actually doing that. Uncle, do you know anything about the markings carved on the rock? It's a mystery. I tried to solve it, but I couldn't. I'm going to take a photo of a bear. That wasn't a coherent conversation. Bear? Say cheese. Ah, oh, those eyes, they're horrifying. And look, the way his lips are pursed and just a slight smile. It makes it seem like he is absolutely going to devour not just the taker of the photo, but any future viewers. Please take photos of four animals and four plants which you come by while walking along the mountain route. So, I guess my soul isn't properly seasoned, eh? I have to pepper it with experiences and visuals in order for it to be oh so appetizing for you to consume it for yourself? Well, let's go. Hmm. Well, what about those plants over there? See, which plants count? Kind of interesting that there's all these, like, intermediary locations. Huh, somebody lost a rubber duck upriver. Or perhaps it, too, is fleeing from some horrifying encounter further up the trail. Those sheep do not sound healthy. In return for a pretty picture, I'll tell you an interesting story. Off I go to my uncle's, and I'll be back with a pretty picture. You're really padding out the length of this with all the backtracking, but, uh... Give me a photo for an interesting story sounds like a bad trade. I'm honestly surprised you're allowing me to leave here and tell other people about it. Hello, who are you? Oh no, it's a boss fight. 
Uh, I should probably plug in a gamepad. I imagine it'll have Dark Souls-esque mechanics. Ma. I hope that you cross the bridge if I don't get any sweets. Ma. What a shame. I don't have any sweets. Okay, so it seems we're at an impasse. And this is straight up banditry, so probably for the best if we find a weapon of some sort and eliminate the target. Uh, but we can't lead the other way, either. Have the developers maybe put this in as a last-ditch effort to stop the player from moving forward and having their own soul, seasoned by the artistic nature of this game, consumed? Hello? When we interact with these flowers, they separate. Uh, why is that a thing? I can't interact with anything else, can I? No. And it doesn't matter how close I am to something. That's utterly bizarre. Maybe we just have to talk to you again? Ma! I won't let you cross the bridge! Unless my mom calls me to go home. Ma! Can I take your photo? A photo? Of me standing on the bridge? Be sure you can. But I won't let you cross the bridge. Okay, banditry is really different from how I remember it working. Oh my god, what is wrong with the character models in this game? And look at you polluting this hill, just laying waste to all you encounter. Are you are you a metaphor for human encroachment on nature? Can I take your photo? What? In such a rubbish tip? No way! Uh, we're sorting this, are we? Uh, well, I guess this is plastic. Uh, food. Oh, man, we're playing Viscera Cleanup Detail in Teddy Floppy Year. Oh, I see. You're probably her missing glasses. Okay, well, plastic, glass, uh, metal cans... Batteries, which... Wow, what kind of electronic devices are you using? Because we haven't really seen many of those so far. I didn't see you winking when that was taken. So here's where we could have gone straight to. And that appears to be a very angry pig bullying another doll like myself, but I have to assume that's a doll because if that's a human, that raises all kinds of insane implications about this world. Implications even more insane than my very own existence. Oh my, that's a long wait. Hello? You two did not give the interaction I was expecting based on your appearances. The cable car isn't running! We've got a problem. What happened? The eagle is sitting on the line and doesn't want to fly away. I'll try and talk to him. And I guess nobody else tried that. Oh, you look like you want to swoop down and carry me back to your nest to pick the flesh from my bones. Or maybe have your little babies do the same. Who's calling me? I've lost my glasses somewhere. Uh, more backtracking. Although I am somewhat relieved. How come it's all the most threatening looking creatures in this game that have the least threatening voices? Tell you what, I'll trade you these glasses for a photo. Have you got my glasses? Here are your glasses. Thank you very much. What a good teddy you are. you That's how you wear those? Oh, I can see that you've got a camera. Can you take a photo of me? But of course. Now, how am I going to send you this without, like, the internet being a thing? Yeah, okay, I guess you just wanted somebody to have it. 
Also, notably, the glasses on your model were not the same color. Unless... That's meant to mean something as well, that... In this world, reality is always distorted from the obvious which we see. Meant to indicate to us, maybe subtly, a cry for help from the developers that something is deeply wrong with this experience. Okay, we got the garbage off the trail to get the eagle off the cable so that we could ride the cable car down to get the pretty picture, to get the goat off the bridge, to get the interesting story, to find the crown and save the town of Mr. Krabs. Please let me ride. The cable car can run now. Here's a special ticket for two free rides. Hmm. Thank you. I'll be happy to use it. Could have just brought money and saved myself a lot of time and effort. Not an ounce of life on any of their faces. One waving at nothing while the other two stare directly at a meta observer. Absolutely horrifying in its stillness. That's what this game is. Unnerving serenity. Hello, what are you doing back here? By my burgundy beret. Is this the end of the trip? Not yet. I'd like to paint the picture for the shepherd. You can use the card and pens. Off you go. Now, I am not by any means an artist. Oh, wow. Not a bad picture. A picture. A present for the shepherd. Okay, so that confirms my suspicions. Three photos are missing from the set. Off I go to the mountains. Okay, so this more or less confirms my suspicions. The way I see it, there are two possibilities currently. Either something is very wrong where they want to harvest my soul, and they've all been taken by some force, probably something living up in the mountains. Or, it's a simulated reality which I found myself in. One which always rewards my explorations. One which always praises me for a job well done, even when I haven't really done anything. I can only hope that this message finds the right person. And that that creature in the woods doesn't get too close while I'm not looking. Oh no, you stay away from me! You get back down there! Look at it hiding in amongst the fog. I actually, I genuinely got jump scared by the second time it popped out. You, the way it so quickly emerges and then sinks back down. It, this is deliberate. It's not just because I got close. It doesn't want to be seen. The way is clear. Maybe the little goat's mum called her home. That feels like a very lazy and unsatisfying resolution to this character arc. All right, old man, I got you a picture, you give me a story. I know you can't tell the difference. Here you go, a picture. Isn't it beautiful? You want to hear the one about the painted rock, do you? Hmm. 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 Well, they say that where there are marks carved in the rock, there's a magic cave. Inside the cave, ancient knights are waiting. Asleep. Only someone brave who will move a big boulder and defeat a terrible monster in battle. Only he can see them. What a story! What a story! Uh, okay, a rhythm game. Good! Now, two notes! That's right! This is actually a little fast for a kid's game. That's kind of haunting. Bah. 
Oh, come on. I was clicking on it. Come on. Why is the yellow one not working? What? Why? Why is the yellow one just not working? Is this another attempt by the developers to halt my progress? Or is it just stupid and unresponsive? Okay, finally work. I feel like it's getting less responsive. You were blatantly just going without my input right there. How is that possible? All right, I've just had a dinner break. And we will see where this is leading us. Yes, as I expected, we're meant to head back down and have a look at those caves. Apparently, there's an ancient evil waiting within for someone to come along and unearth it. Perhaps that's what they wanted. Perhaps that's why they sent me on this trail. So that I would be the one to unleash some ancient order. And there's something else following me now. Okay, that's great. Maybe we can get the bear to help us? Could you help me, bear? What? Where? Uh, uh, help? Of course. Try to move that big boulder. Uh, a boulder? Uh, it's no big deal for me. I, uh, 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 I'll wait here. You know something I don't, huh? Perhaps you're part of it. You were always the one who was meant to lead me here. It's a bit cold here. Yeah, well, you should have actually put on that jacket you packed. A box of matches. Which we can use to light this candle. A candle? Or just take it with us. Well, that's actually copyright infringement, so they will be hearing from my lawyers. I own the concept of candles now. Yeah, this was all always just here. How did this bat get food? Batty Nocturnus at your service. Uh, what brings you here? I want to solve the mystery of the cave of the sleeping knights who are guarded by a terrible monster. Oh, uh, wait, wait. You've mixed something up. There's no monster here. The knights are here, but it's best not to wake them up. I'd show them to you, but it's uh, completely dark down there. I've got a candle and matches. Excellent. I'll go and light the lantern in the next hall. Uh, come with me, but promise you'll be quiet. So that's that then. Okay, mystery solved. This was a lot easier than it was made to sound. <laughs> we are just breaking all kinds of rules. Good God, their eyes. Time to sound the wake up call. Just one moment. Teddy, look for the music box. The music box? Is that what it is? We need to lull them back to sleep? Well, not before I get my picture, which you apparently have banned. How? Just looks like a regular box to me. Catch the black and white note light drops in your music box until both indicators are filled up. Don't catch drops in other colors. Off you go. Okay, apparently that's how this works. Uh, we have to click and drag. Only white and black. Hmm. This part is actually weirdly calming. 
Well, we finally captured what I assume is some kind of cave-born, perhaps fungal secretion? That's why we had to get the chemistry exactly right or it wouldn't work. And now we can produce our sleep serum and get these guys knocked right out again. Does that mean we can grab a pick? Can I take your photo as a souvenir? <laughs> but don't use the flash or uh, the knights might wake up. I photographed all the animals. And we come out. Oh, we come out in an entirely different place. It acts as another shortcut. We are right here. We can head back to the cable cars or forward. Well, we can take a picture of this plant as well while we're here. Oh, great. Teddy, help me, please. Those naughty little marmots took the carabiners for climbing. <laughs> you sound invested in your role. Collect ten carabiners for climbing. Indicate only those marmots which are holding the carabiners. Don't be fooled. Don't catch a toadstool. Uh, okay, I guess it's like a whack-a-mole minigame? Got you? No? Uh, what is... <laughs> what, what, that sound sounds weirdly firearm-ish in nature. Is that representative of what we're actually doing to them? Any interesting mountain flowers grow around here? Oh, yes, yes. Over there in the gorge, near the reserve. Off I go, then. All right, so question, why are you just a Star Trek red shirt? Look at that thing back there, completely motionless. I'm telling you, the animals in this forest, despite it being already weird that they're apparently distinct from the characters, they're just watching us. It's so clear that they're trying to keep tabs on us as we journey through here. Keeping an eye on our progress, perhaps to stop us at some point? I'm not going into the cave. You probably would have been more reasonable to say that from the very start. I could hear some voices from this hole. Uh, won't a monster come out of it by any chance? This character is so unbelievably frustrating to listen to. The big bear managed to block the entrance to the cave. Thank you, Teddy Floppy Ear. And that was what we needed. We just had to inform you. Okay, well, I think we have basically everything. Ah, so you did have little chicks waiting to tear me apart. I'd like to fix the sign to the pole, but I don't have any nails or a hammer. So maybe a bit of string will do. String? It's just the thing. Uh, so I have to go back and talk to everyone I've talked to before for bits and pieces to help me fix the sign. Yep, this is the climactic adventure reaching its conclusion. Alright, let's pick this stupid sign. Ready! Thank you, Teddy Floppy Ear. Thank you! And have you seen what a beautiful violet is growing here? Oh dear, I almost forgot about it. And let us complete our artistic journey. The fifth flower is photographed. I have all the photos so I can go back to my uncle's. So there was no ritualistic sacrifice altar up here. It was just about 
Well, I guess they were trying to feed me to the birds. That was the main thing. Or wake up the knights, which will maybe bring about the apocalypse if they ever observe daylight again. Either way, I should probably just go talk to Uncle. The task is completed! And I managed to solve the mystery of the painted rock! Malachite mammoths, you did very well. Hooray! And here we have the finished work of art. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your help, Teddy. Oh, oh, honey-filled gingerbread. My train is just about to leave. I need to run to the platform. What? Wait, I have a souvenir for you. It's an album for your photos. An album with photos? A souvenir from my uncle? Farewell, Teddy. Thank you very much. See you, Uncle. This has been a day full of extremely bizarre interactions. And what exactly is the nature of this trip? What is it that we were here to do to begin with? Because we did not spend a lot of quality time with Uncle. Well, I guess we gotta run and catch that train. It kind of makes it seem like perhaps they didn't quite get what they wanted out of me, and now they've just kind of lost interest. They'll find their new artistic soul to harvest. Or maybe they did get my soul by having me create that work of art in the end. Goodbye, Teddy uh, Floppy Ear. Goodbye. <laughs> that was the actual voice actor in the booth. He, like, literally didn't know why he was there. Well, this is headache-inducing. It was an unforgettable expedition. I got to know the mountains, and I learned something. If you want to see how beautiful the world is, start looking around. You only have to know how to look carefully. And this is where art helps. And I got this photo album from my uncle as a souvenir. Look. Look. Look into those dead, dead eyes. All right, so that was Teddy Floppy Ear. And I have to say, I really didn't expect to play through the entire thing in one sitting, although it wasn't very long. But it was a lot creepier than I expected. I mean, look, when I first picked up this game, I expected that there would be some kind of dark secret, like it wasn't secretly child-friendly or something. However, once I actually got into it, there are certain aspects of this just in the stilted nature of the dialogue, the bizarre interactions, the way it just glosses over these huge things. Uh, it still feels like there's something wrong with it. Not to mention the absolutely horrifying character models. But, you know, it was overall an innocuous children's adventure game that, while somewhat lacking in explorables and things to click on, was actually quite pretty and comforting in its music and art design. Which I suppose is fitting for a game about art. But if you liked this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link